Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Right. Uh, hello everybody, uh, let us continue our lecture series for this uh, course optimal control guidance and estimation. Talking about lecture number 6 here, uh, where we will review some calculus of variations concept and uh, this uh, two part lecture series and the first lecture will be taken this time and then uh, we will generalize some of the concepts in the next lecture. So, why do we do that? Because uh, one very strong backbone of optimal control theory relies on this calculus of variation approach actually. In fact, the entire problem can be viewed up, viewed as, a, as nothing but calculus of variation problem actually. That is what you will do, but typically the calculus of variation is a vast subject also in, a, in its own right. We will not talk too much details about everything that is involved, but we will just see the concepts that are relevant and then uh, we will proceed further for optimal control ideas and all that actually next. So, this is the motivation why you want to study calculus of variations actually here. So, first thing is uh, before going there a little bit of motivation we can uh, we have seen some of these thing before, but let us uh, have a look at that. Uh, what is an optimal control formulation? Okay, that is what uh, we are our ultimate aim is actually. So, in a, in a way it can be summarized something like that which I think we have all I mean discussed about it a little bit before. So, our objective in optimal control problem is to find an admissible time history of control variable u of t in the in the domain t 0 to t f uh, t belongs to that domain ok. We have to find out all u of t or rather a u of t trajectory within this t 0 to t f which causes the system governed by this system dynamics uh, to follow an admissible trajectory. Okay, so, it is a control trajectory you are interested to find out. So, that uh, the state trajectory becomes an admissible uh, if you if you view it as a solution to this uh, I mean this equation actually. Also. But on the way it has to optimize that means, minimize or maximize a meaningful performance index which which can be given like that in a in a kind of a very generic form, but that does not mean that is the only form basically it can be having your own way of defining it, but it is a very generic way this is this can be defined something like that. Okay. And it also has to set uh, force the system to satisfy certain boundary conditions. Okay. So, what is an objective? Objective is all that our objective is to find a some sort of a control, uh, I mean, control trajectory in this domain so that it will satisfy all these uh, nice things actually. It will uh, give a solution of the state which is admissible, it will minimize or maximize a cost function, and it will also satisfy certain boundary condition with both initial condition as well as final condition actually. That is our objective. And obviously, it falls in the framework of calculus variation because this is a path dependent optimization, optimization what you are talking about here. And then there is a dynamic systems involved in the process actually. So, at a point it does not make too much sense, but uh, as a evolution in time it makes lot of sense actually. So, looking at this particular cost function ok, you can talk uh, we have again discussed this a uh, little bit before as well. So, if you talk about minimum time then I can talk about minimizing this fellow and hence I can select phi 0 and L 1 in this this thing. 0 it is 1 then it is nothing but uh, T f minus T 0. So, that is what I want to minimize here actually. Okay. Now, if you want about minimum control effort and this is uh, this is what I will do this is I will put it as 0 and this L I will take it as something like I, uh, U transpose R U. Okay. Then if I do, if that means uh, I am minimizing the control effort in a way actually. So, this means uh, phi is 0 and L equal nothing more like that actually. And then if you talk about minimum deviation of a state about C with minimum control effort this uh, this helicopter hovering sort of ideas that I discussed before as well. So, then uh, you can select something like this in other words uh, your L becomes like that and again phi is 0 actually. Okay. So, like that you can variety of things you can talk about and uh, this particular thing talks about something like a terminal time dependent uh, of a component of the J and this talks about some path dependent T 0 to T f what is happening on the way actually. So, this is what happens at T f and this is happens at what happens from T 0 to T f ok. This is this these two components are built around that kind, that kind of ideas actually. So, this is how you can do that and again if you talk about minimum deviation of state from origin and things like that uh, then it is uh, gives a standard uh, uh, kind of 
quadratic regulator sort of ideas actually then uh, you can take at least something like this and okay if you want to minimize the control while the final state reaches close to a constant value I mean, this is this must be an error quantity you want to minimize that then you, you can talk about a phi component now at equal to tf this has to be minimum on the way you want to control f to be minimum so l has to be like that actually so various things can be defined they are just uh, just token a uh, kind of uh, examples out of us actually so we can think of your own problem and construct your cost function your own way actually so the if you just see that this particular problem is directly falling under the calculus of variation problem because you are interested in in finding a straight trajectory finding a control trajectory which will ultimately also give you some sort of admissible straight trajectory so it's actually a trajectory finding problem sort of thing and the, with respect to those kind of trajectories our everything is optimal actually that means the cost function is uh, either maximum or minimum that we want to do as well as it satisfies the boundary condition actually so directly it falls on the calculus of variation that is why we are interested to see some concepts of this uh, this calculus of variation actually ideas there all right so before that there are a little bit fundamental theorems of calculus as well uh, as if we, this talks about something like derivatives of integrals and all that it's just good to know that actually that what's happening here now we know that uh, the, the the limits are constant numbers actually and the integrals do not contain any function of state and think i mean function of this x variable then it turns out to be zero but what happens if the limit itself is a function of state actually uh, function of the free variable then what happens the dy dx of this quantity happens to be f of x provided f of x is continuous actually these are something directly from calculus not not really calculus of variations actually uh, advanced calculus actually now what happens uh, these two limits are constant but uh, inside the function inside the integral you have a function which is a function of the the dependent variable then what happens actually it is integrated over y but uh, the result is a function of x remember this this integral is integrated over y so y is gone actually because that will be evaluated eventually but it ultimately it will result in a function of x so that you can talk about derivative of x actually okay. so this there is this result is given something like that provided if this f of x has continuous partial derivative of del f by del x actually okay. then uh, you have something like a little bit extension of that and you tell okay now what if in addition to that condition my limits are also function of free variable okay uh, psi1 and psi2 instead of constants a and b we have these functions uh, now coming there actually then it satisfies something very close to that what you know here plus additional component actually so this this will be something this okay what you have here plus this uh, this two components will come here actually okay. and some of these things will be used uh, in our calculus of variation analysis concepts also it will give you some transverse transversal eddy conditions ideas and all that actually see that there yeah. anyway so this is just a quick glimpse of these theorems 1 2 3 which we don't want to prove here or anything but with this uh, background in mind we we'll go to this calculus of variation concepts actually so what's the difference between calculus and calculus of variations on one hand we talk about functions which is the part of the calculus and the other end we talk about functional actually okay and what is functional you can think of uh, something like a function of function sort of thing actually so j is a function of x but x itself is a function of t okay so that kind of thing we talk about a functional basically okay and typically these functionals are also kind of uh, i mean scalar values and things like that ultimately it will be integrated once you integrate and uh, it will ultimately result in some sort of a scalar value actually but anyway so that is uh, coming back to that uh, function is uh, something defined like this to each value of the independent variable there is a corresponding value of the dependent variable and we can uh, know these functions uh, from very basic ideas and all the details so i don't want to describe too much on that but as a functional to each function there is a corresponding value of the dependent variable actually okay so that is uh, i mean in a way you can it feel similar basically but uh, what in a, i mean if you just look at uh, kind of a intuitive idea sense then this is a function okay one is a independent variable and they've got a function and it's a function of a function basically okay so that in that kind of idea you can actually okay so here the difference is to each value of the independent variable there is a corresponding value of the dependent variable and here the difference is to each to each function so this, that's the difference actually to each function there is a corresponding value of the dependent variable okay here it is a dip, uh, to each value of the independent variable there is a corresponding value but here is a to, to each function there is a corresponding value actually okay so that's that the difference there actually 
Okay, now you have to talk about what is increment of a function. Obviously, it is defined something like that: x of t plus delta t minus x t. And what is this here? Increment of a functional. Then you talk about j of x t plus delta x t, and this delta is denoted something like this. And this itself is a function of t. You know that. So, and then this this will give you some sort of a increment of a functional in the sense this minus that will give you some delta j basically. Pictorially, also it is possible to denote. We will see that in a second actually. Now, delta j. Okay, if we talk about that, uh, what about some sort of a small uh, kind of example? Talk about j is something like this. Okay, so the delta j by definition turns out to be like that, just from this this definition actually. So you have j of x plus delta x, both both are functions of time again, minus j of x of t, and j of x of t is defined something like that. So I can put it somewhere like that. But j of x plus delta x, I can evaluate wherever x is there. I'll put x plus delta x, and then make it square and things like that. So then I'll integrate. I mean, I will uh, kind of uh, combine the two integrals and cancel out some terms and things like that. That way, I will uh, this 2x square and 2x square and things like that will go. All okay. So what you'll what you'll be left out with this kind of a quantity actually. Okay. So as long as I know this delta x of t, okay, as a function uh, in its own right, then I can talk about evaluating this integral. Along with uh, this x of t, actually, I, I have to know both x of t as well as the corresponding variations throughout the time domain. Then I can evaluate this uh, this corresponding delta j basically. Okay. Now this is uh, pictorially representing something like this. So this is a function and its increment. If you have a function and independent variable in the x-axis, you have a function null and a independent function in the y-axis. I mean x-axis. Yeah. Okay. So that is what the instead of a value, you talk about some sort of a value of the function itself, basically. Except t. Okay. All right. So the in other things will remain same. I mean, if whatever happens here as a as an independent variable sense will happen, everything will happen here in this function space actually in the in this function sense basically. But remember, this itself is a function. X of t itself is a function actually. You are just evaluating that function at a particular value of time, and then uh, interpreting what is happening there actually. Okay, so you talk about a, a let's say increment delta t. You talk about a variation delta x. Okay, and then talk about some. This, this is a df. This is delta z. Things like that. Actually, and typically we'll uh, even though we know that this is a kind of uh, for, I mean suppose you change the function from here to here. This independent variable, then the function goes from here to there. But if you put a first order approximation, this is just like a kind of a linear approximation sort of thing, and then go up to that point, then you'll end up there actually. You'll not end up there. Okay, so that's the defect thing and all that. That's the error quantity basically. Similar thing will happen also here. You will go there, but okay, this will be the error quantity actually. Okay. So most of our analysis will remain uh, limited to the first order sort of thing actually. Okay. So that is why this pictorial representation has some meaning actually there, and more than that you can say, you can read from this book actually. Right. So how do you calculate whatever you define as differential of a function? It turns out to be variation of a functional here. Right. So what is differential of a function? Delta f star is nothing but f of t star plus delta t minus f of t star, and then you can evaluate it that way. So it turns out to be df, and this is kind of defined as d square f and things like that. So yeah, well, this is how it is, and then if you talk about uh, delta t goes to zero, then you talk about the divide this both sides by delta t, and then take delta t going to zero, then it so happens that uh, df by dx and all that is first order term and all that that way actually. So you you end up with some approximations which uh, which talks about uh, that actually. Df is nothing but f dot into delta t in general. That's what I told you here. Df is nothing but f dot into delta t. That's what you get it there actually. F dot is the slope and delta t, and then df is that actually. Uh, okay, so this is how it is. But coming to the other side of the thing, variation of a functional, you can again talk about very similar, and then first variation, second variation, like that, you can talk, uh, and then you'll end up with something like this actually. Okay, so most of the time we'll be worried about first variation, okay, and that will be defined something like that way, and second variations are uh, important only for sufficiency check and all that later. Okay, so very, I mean, one class later probably we'll talk about that a little bit. Okay, so what we are talking here is uh, result one. Okay, what is uh, derivative of variation is variation of derivative, and result two, which talks about integration of variation, is variation of integration. It may sound trivial, and in the proof happens to be very trivial also, but it's a very powerful implication actually. Okay, 
So, what you are talking here derivative of a variation this is this is by definition like that this is a variation quantity and this is d by ok. Now, ok what you are talking here by the way all this uh, ok let me see whether I have a picture somewhere ok this is what it you are talking about. So, it is actually a x of t ok what you are de dealing here and some x star of t ok and the difference between that is also a function right. I mean if you talk about various values of uh, this x axis you will get various values of this difference actually the difference is nothing but delta x actually okay, that is what you are talking. So, if you have a path you are talking about a variation around the path that means, I will take some other alternative path around actually, okay, that is the concept of variation actually. Right. Okay. So, this is what I am talking here actually. Okay. So, you can see that this is the uh, variation and then derivative of that and then simply use the definition of this variation x minus x star and then it will just evaluate the derivative ok. And this two difference is nothing but the variation of x dot by definition again ok. This is the this sum derivative minus sum derivative of star value actually. So, is, uh, by definition it is nothing but delta of x dot actually. Again very same algebra very similar algebra you take the integration and then uh, put it back the definition and then separate it out. It can be done because both this derivative and linear operators are actually linear operators that is that is why it happens actually ok talk about uh, this uh, separate it out and by definition from here is nothing but variation of this function ok this functional actually. So, you consider this integration itself is a functional ok then it is uh, nothing but variation of that function ok. okay. So, what you are talking about is uh, integration of variation by definition like that is variation of integration which is that by definition like that. Actually. Ok. So, very simple two line proof, but uh, very powerful results as we see little later actually. Okay. So, first thing uh, some exercise for the variation of this particular functional how do you do that. And also uh, some small uh, kind of comment if it tells you that uh, ok just evaluate the variation that means, uh, we mean first variation not mean second third variation and all that actually. But, okay. So, by default variation means first variation actually. Okay. So, we talk about uh, this problem we want to evaluate the first variation or just the variation of the j. Then uh, method 1 we can just go to definition brute force way of doing that then put the j and then try to expand it ok put the definitions and then land up with some some expressions like that ok. And remember uh, second order third order the variations are neglected. So, you can neglect all these terms and you will end up with something like this actually. What about method 2? So, this is uh, you can directly go to the result ok this is the result that we discussed uh, this one ok. Then you can simply put it back here and then uh, then evaluate this del j by del x ok directly ok. Then you can excite this idea of variation of integral is integral of variation here ok. That means, this is uh, what you are talking about is uh, like this ok, because this one can be pushed inside now this integral actually ok. So, then you can land up with something like this ok. Ok, directly you are taking help of del j by del x evaluation actually that is the that is the difference and that simplifies your algebra. Okay. And you will end up with something like this actually okay. because this derivative can be pushed inside these limits are constant now it can be pushed inside and then you can uh, you can have a simplification term 4 x plus 3 here okay. so that is how it happens there. Actually. Ok. Now, uh, uh, what is this uh, some boundary condition ideas and all that uh, remember this optimal control problem also talks about boundary conditions. And here you can talk about a variety of boundary conditions. It can be fixed endpoint, free endpoint, partially fixed, partially free, something like that actually. So, when you talk about uh, fixed endpoints, what you are telling is uh, at t0, my x of t0 is a fixed value, and at tf, my x of tf is also a fixed value. Okay. So, this is uh, like uh, you have to your solution is to satisfy this kind of endpoints actually. T0 x to x of T0 is a is a number, I mean specified number, and Tf and Xf is also a specified number actually. So that is kind of a fixed endpoint problems, so, uh, and free endpoint problems is uh, can be both ways. That means uh, it is either completely free, and we don't really care about where it lands and things like that, 
or it may be required to lie on a curve actually okay many of these things uh, practical examples will probably demand that for example uh, if you really want to launch a satellite when you go and launch a satellite uh, anywhere in the orbit is fine actually because uh, once you have once you satisfy the orbital conditions it will keep on revolving in the orbit anyway okay so that is your job actually it doesn't matter which which point you join any you can join the orbit with the orbital conditions at the point obviously if you consider that that is nothing but a function so orbital equations will happen to be elliptic and then that ellipse ellipse suggests an equation governing equation sort of thing so if your variables happen to match with that governing equations then you are fine your location doesn't matter actually okay. so this kind of problems uh, are just something like this it may require to lie on a curve it have to actually or it can be simply completely free you don't really worry about uh, where it goes and things like that as long as uh, it uh, it satisfies the other objectives basically it in fact if the end point happens to be completely free we will have some some term in the cost function which will give, which will kind of wind the problem in a in a loose constraint sense in other words soft constraint sense sort of thing if you have a soft constraint term in the cost function then your final boundary condition can be really free but in a, in, a, in a way it is indirectly kind of uh, directed towards that actually okay now what is this specified points can be like uh, i mean uh, okay this x t0 x0 and, and tf xf specified means it can be either hard constraint or soft constraint if it is hard constraint we are demanding that it this value x of t0 has to be equal to certain value and x of tf has to be equal to certain value and suppose it is a not a hard constraint but a soft constraint they are telling okay x of tf can be somewhere around that value okay. so the soft constraint part typically goes to the cost function and hard constraint typically becomes a kind of a end point problem sort of thing so that means uh, boundary condition sense it will come actually so all that uh, i mean these are the concepts that you are talking about so the boundary conditions can be fixed end point conditions or free end point and if it is uh, fixed this way if it is free that way actually now what do you, how do you define optimum of a function null actually so that's what your final objective will lie there okay now this uh, mathematically it can be defined something like this a function null is said to have a relative optimum at x star if there exist an epsilon which is greater than 0 such that all functions x of t belongs to omega okay that is the domain of interest what you are talking which satisfies this condition okay okay that means you are not allowing this variations to be arbitrarily large if it satisfy this particular condition if, if an epsilon happens to be a small quantity in general then you are allowing those variations in and around x star actually okay so for small variations any small variation you take then uh, what happens here uh, the increment of j has the same sign actually okay the same similar concepts that we derive from this uh, static optimization and all if it is a minimum point any direction you go the function value is supposed to be more than the minimum point value okay similar thing it is uh, any variation you take around uh, around the optimum path the optimum uh, i mean the ultimate uh, cost function that is uh, of interest to you has to be either the either more than that value if it is a minimum problem or less than that value if it is a maximum problem okay. ultimately the cost functional and most of the time we uh, will talk it as a cost function also okay. both uh, with the assumption that you are talking about a functional anyway the so most of the time what will happen is uh, if you take any arbitrary variation around the optimum path the function is supposed to either increase or either decrease or decrease basically so in that sense we talk that is a optimum value basically okay. so this is what is written here so if you take j of x minus j of x star if it happens to be greater than equal to 0 for all variations delta x we satisfy this kind of condition remember this is nothing but delta x actually delta x bound absolute value of delta x at any point in time has to be less than equal to less epsilon actually for all small so all such small variations this is true now is called a local minimum for all such variations if it is this one is true then it's a local maximum actually okay and if it is satisfied if these conditions are satisfied for arbitrarily large values of uh, epsilon then obviously j of x star happens to be a global optimum point also basically okay if you relax yourself then the variations need not be small variations can be large as large as possible then it uh, leads to the concept of global optimum actually so this is the concept that i have just uh, shown you also so the, suppose you have uh, actually found an optimum path this dotted line dark dotted line actually let's say that's the optimum path then if you talk about any variation around that 
that can be represented like that. So, if I evaluate my functional around the solid line, I will get a I mean get a value which is more than the integral value or the cost functional value okay, if I evaluate on that path actually. So, there are two paths here and remember the cost function happens to be an integral value of this the, this functions basically. So, if I evaluate the integral taking this function whatever solid line thing, I will get a value which is higher than the integral value if I use the other one instead actually that is the whole idea there. Now, what is this fundamental theorem of uh, calculus of variations? Uh, this is a very nice fundamental theorem here. Uh, it tells us that uh, for any x star to be can kind of a candidate optimum solution, we should have a necessary condition which tells us that the first variation is equal to 0 and sufficiency condition tells us that the second variation should satisfy this condition, either positive definite or negative definite sense actually. Right close to what we know in static optimization ideas there, but extensions of that into dynamic optimization ideas. Then there is a very interesting fundamental lemma associated with uh, this uh, calculus of variations, which tells that uh, this kind of thing. So, for uh, sorry, sorry if for every continuous function g of t this is true, okay, then this has to be 0 for, for the entire interval actually. Okay. The, let me read the theorem again if for every continuous function g of t okay if this is true okay that is a preposition actually if this is true okay then this has to be true for all for, for the entire interval actually okay and the only condition is delta of x that is the variation of x has to be continuous in the entire domain okay. as long as the variation of delta x is continuous in the entire domain in addition to that if this is true this integral is true then the integrand value has to be true for the entire interval. It is a very powerful theorem actually okay. because integrand value being equal to 0 for the entire interval is something that is a very big implication actually okay. and that is what we will exploit it heavily in deriving this optimal control necessary conditions and all that. Okay. So, we will see that. Okay. So, uh, again the, the theorem is like this and a uh, little, uh, little proof associated with that also let us see because it is a very important theorem as well. So, it is actually kind of a very easy to solve by using this contradiction ideas and all that actually. Okay. So, what it tells you that uh, let g of t and delta of uh, delta x of t be something like this okay. that means, g of t is uh, is kind of uh, I mean greater than 0 okay, for all t which belongs to that okay, from small interval uh, if it is uh, it is less than 0 okay, we are not interested in other things which is that way. Okay. Uh, and either the delta x is greater than 0 or delta x is less than 0 in this interval actually. Okay. But, uh, but it so happens that if it is true then g of t and delta x of t is, is not then I mean it is not equal to 0 that is the whole idea there actually. Okay. So, what you are talking here we are talking of some contradiction basically. So, what you are showing we are interested to show this one. Okay. So, what is contradiction here uh, that g of t okay is not 0 okay if g of t is not 0 then it can be either positive or negative right that is all you are telling actually okay right uh, that is a contradiction g of t is not 0 if it is not 0 this can be either negative or positive I mean, that is the only two conditions that will happen. So, this is what is written there actually and uh, we are telling okay do not worry about the entire interval, but limit our analysis to a small interval okay it can be 0 everywhere else we do not care about that okay. We one particular example where within this interval T a T b okay, the function is either completely greater than 0 strictly positive throughout or strictly negative throughout okay, it is possible right I mean as long as T a T b is very small it is possible you are taking that particular type of thing. Actually. So, remember the, then remember this is something uh, very interesting actually. Okay, so, delta of x okay, this delta x is can be arbitrary right. So, somebody can choose a delta of x something like this okay. delta x is actually variation of uh, x basically right. So, it can take any arbitrary thing and it talks about uh, this function is continuous and it can take uh, any variation sort of thing. So, we will choose a particular variation which is uh, non-zero in, in that interval that is all that is what it matters all these math equations aside. Okay, we are considering that particular case where g of t is non-zero in a small interval at least it is everywhere else it is 0 
and you are you are selecting a particular variation for which in this interval T A T B the value the function the variation value is non zero and it is strictly one sided. Okay, it is non zero does not mean it can change sign and all that actually it, that is the type of variation we are selecting it is because we are free to select any variation we want actually that way. Okay. So, as long as this is completely one sided and this is completely one sided the the integral of that whatever integral you are talking about here it can turn out to be something like that and hence it is non zero because if you multiply any positive quantity or negative quantity with any positive or negative quantity here throughout basically okay then you will end up with a non zero value that's what it matters actually okay, it need not be positive or negative or anything like that it just requires that the integral is non zero okay but what it tells you it is that is not allowed basically right because this is the requirement of the theorem it tells you that this has to be true and here is a case where this is not true basically okay. why it happens because fundamentally we assume that g of t has some non zero value in this interval actually okay. so as long as it's a very within a very small interval this g of t happens to be non zero we can always be smart to select some sort of a variation which is non zero and once with that particular interval and claim that this integral is non zero okay so using that concept i mean using that idea this you can tell that okay if you if that also is not allowed then the only way it cannot happen is if you, uh, the function is continuously zero throughout actually okay. if it is continuously zero there is no interval t a t v in between where it can take some some uh, value like this i mean one sided value where i can be smart and select some some variation around that okay that's the whole idea there okay. So it's a very interesting theorem. It tells you that if this happens to be okay, this happens to be true, okay, for every continuous function g of t, if this this happens to be true, where this variation delta x is continuous function is in that, then this g of t have, must be equal to zero throughout the interval actually. Okay, so, very interesting kind of ideas there actually. Okay, now coming moving further, we talk about this necessary condition of optimality. Okay, so what's the problem here? Problem is to kind of uh, optimize this cost functional. Now it is uh, this functional. Uh, what you are talking about here is a function of both x and x dot as well as independent variable t actually. Okay, so what's the idea here? We want to optimize this uh, cost functional or cost function uh, by appropriate selection of uh, this x of t. And here we will consider this t zero t f both are fixed. And what the solution? The solution tells the for using this fundamental theorem and all, it tells necessary condition that the first variation has to be equal to zero. Okay. So if you use this, the first variation equal to zero. Okay, that part will not be able to prove in this course probably. You just take it for granted. And it is very intuitive also. I mean, if you see this uh, pictorial ideas and all, it's very intuitive actually. I mean, any, any any arbitrary variation you take, the function has to increase. And if I really have optimum value, then at that point of time. Uh, the variations will not lead to any improvement actually. That means the first variation has to be zero. Basically, that way. so that that kind of idea is this. Now, if you if you talk about that and use this the, this result, first variation equal to zero, then you will end up with very two interesting equation. One equation is called uh, very famously called Euler-Lagrange equation, and uh, um, the other equation is called something called transversality condition. Essentially, in a simpler language, it will give you something like a boundary condition actually. Okay. okay and remember that this boundary condition can uh, can like part of the equation might have already been satisfied by problem formulation itself that means suppose you talk about initial condition being fixed you know the initial condition for sure there is no variation around that then you talk about okay if delta x is zero anyway okay. so if delta x is zero this equation is zero at t zero basically so that is part of the equation is already satisfied on the part of the equation you can you can get it from this uh, this transversality condition actually now a little bit interesting history part of it this uh, this uh, el equation is, is first actually derived by euler and who happens to be quite uh, kind of senior to lagrange actually but then lagrange came up with uh, some sort of a uh, i mean the euler idea were all about discretization and all if you discretize and then to have uh, play around with the math and all it is easy to show uh, the the this el equation uh, in simpler simpler algebra and all that but some point of time this uh, like mathematicians are not comfortable with discretization process itself actually so they like this ideas of uh, calculus actually because that is uh, rigorousness and things like that so using this calculus ideas and all uh, lagrange which which uh, who was a kind of an avid follower of euler 
they came up with an alternative derivation which we'll see in a second now okay and that derivation euler kind of liked it very much so he prescribed to the world that okay that approach will be followed not the discretization approach per se basically so people have kind of forgotten that part of history but ultimately it will it will kind of result to the same equation anyway so this is kind of famously known as el equation or euler lagrange equation actually okay. so this is what it is so let us go back and try to see what is going on there uh, so the proof part of it uh, is what i'm talking about so this is the problem we have got an x of t and you have got an x star of t which we claim that it is an optimal path actually optimum path so the corresponding variation function is what you are talking about here is x of t minus x star of t the difference part all over actually okay so this is what i am claiming x star is an optimum solution and x star plus delta x is some adjacent solution actually okay so what is the delta j then j minus j star it can be kind of written like that j happens to be this one by definition okay and uh, j star happens to be that by definition okay so if i in, if i combine these two i can talk about l minus uh, l of all these minus l of all these star values okay and that is nothing but delta l actually okay so essentially i can represent delta j as an integral of delta l times dt now what is delta l we have to analyze that and delta l is nothing but l of all that remember this is x x dot and t x is nothing but x star plus delta x and similarly like this actually right so delta l is like this and uh, i mean l of all these star values and l of uh, sorry all these st uh, star values plus delta x and uh, plus delta x dot like that and minus l of these star values actually so if you see this expression this is again gives us a scope to analyze it using taylor series actually and uh, as i keep telling this taylor series happens to be our backbone of all engineering ideas actually so we will uh, repeatedly keep on using this this taylor series ideas so okay now coming back uh, this delta l is nothing but l of that minus l of this okay so using this uh, this taylor series ideas we'll end up with something like that with higher dot terms and neglecting again this higher dot terms and all we can now tell that this delta l tends to this variation delta l okay first variation sense okay if i come if i keep only the first variation quantities and all is nothing but that okay because i am neglecting the higher dot terms here okay so you, now what happens this delta j is tends to that or approximately equal to this uh, this delta j rather with the variation of uh, first variation of j and that can be represented like that because this is this one delta j is nothing but that and delta l turns out to be something like this so using this two i can uh, you can write that delta j tends to this delta j okay variation j there is nothing but that putting there actually now it's the time to analyze this one okay where you lead to and things like that so the problem here is this term because we know what is variation of x we really don't know what is variation of x dot really okay and uh, these two are not really extremely arbitrary quantity you cannot select one extremely independent of the other because one is a function of time and the other one is derivative and the variation of that actually so they are kind of related to each other actually in a way so we have to account for that actually okay so what happens here this quantity is what your our concern and this quantity by definition what you are talking here this is that term but by definition this variation of x dot is nothing but d by dt of variation of x that's just definition when you talk about uh, delta of x dot is nothing but d by dt of dx i mean delta x basically so now here is an opportunity the to uh, to use this integration by part now you talk about this is one function and this is another one so let me do that integration by parts so i talk about uh, using that integration by part so the first function times the integral of the second function okay minus integral of the derivative of the first one into integral of the second one and all that actually integration of everything okay, so just nothing but integration by parts actually so if you do that what happens now is very interesting because dt dt is kind of uh, appearing here the various derivative and integration no need to do that so it result in only delta x so del x del l by del x dot into delta x okay you can evaluate this uh, this integral now and similar thing will also happen here so what you end up with okay d by dt of this term multiplied by del x into delta y actually now if you look at this term to this term this term contains variation of x dot and all that this term doesn't contain variation of x dot it contains partial derivative with respect to x dot that is okay because that is that you can evaluate basically 
and the result it all talks about variation of x only. So, in a way it nicely winds up this uh, this interdependency of this this variation and its derivative and all that each other. Now, go back uh, this is the two term one term and second term. So, second term we have got some idea. So, we will put them together and tell ok del j is nothing but first term plus second term and first term we will keep as it is second term we will uh, we'll put what we got right now. Okay. So, once you put that uh, this is how, how it is actually uh, this uh, this is the first term this is the first first term of the this this quantity. So, that comes here and that is the second term of that quantity which comes here. Okay. So, but, so what you are getting here after that uh, we can uh, we can talk about combining the first and last term okay, first term and last term we can combine and then put it in the integral form here uh, and this one is not a function of n this is not an integration process. So, this will keep it aside actually. Okay. So, what you are talking here that you are talking about just a simplification of delta j in terms of that okay, it talks about only variation of x and integration with respect to d t basically. Okay. So, we have a term okay, which is an integral term and we have a term which is outside the integral actually. Okay. But what it tells us the, the fundamental theorem what does it tell us it tells us that the first variation has to be equal to 0. Okay. So, first variation equal to 0 that means this quantity has to be equal to 0. Okay. Now, we will go back and find out uh, okay, this quantity can be equal to 0 provided okay, this is independent of this integral process. So, this has to be equal to 0 okay. these two are kind of very independent quantities actually. Okay. So, in in a way this has to be equal to 0 and that integral term has to be equal to 0 basically okay. because uh, that is what uh, we are demanding basically. Okay. Now, what happens to this quantity okay. this is clear actually right this this one this quantity has to be equal to 0 that is clear, but what, what about this quantity. Now, we will tell that if the integral is is 0 throughout okay, and the variation is continuous okay, then we will excite this theorem that we just discussed with proof and all that actually. Okay we will tell the integrand value has to be 0 throughout the throughout the interval and that is what will lead us to this integrand value whatever integration is there that has to be 0 throughout the throughout the interval t 0 to t f actually. So, that is how we will get this famous E L equation. So, we will get this this E L equation is nothing but this integral quantity actually. Okay. So, d l del l by del x minus d by d t of this quantity is equal to 0 is famously known as E L equation and then the second quantity is nothing but that that happens to be your boundary condition equation or transversality equation actually. Now, couple of comments here that uh, the first equation that you are talking about uh, must be satisfied regardless of the end condition. Remember this condition comes from the integral quantity it does not talk about end condition actually. So, this condition has to be true throughout the interval okay, and that condition has to be true at the boundary points actually. Okay. And as I told before part of the second equation may already be satisfied by the problem uh, of uh, by the problem definition actually. If you talk about a fixed endpoint condition like you start with a certain uh, initial condition then delta x 0 is 0 already basically. Okay. So, that uh, that is not required. Okay. So, how it is utilized by the way this this one evaluated at T f minus this one the same one evaluated at T 0 that is equal to 0 that is how this equation is interpreted that way. The this value all evaluated at T f minus this same value all evaluated at t 0 is equal to 0. Okay. So, that is the that is the way of interpreting interpreting actually. Okay. Obviously, time for a, a small example problem to get our ideas little more clear actually. So, the whole idea here I mean the problem definition here is something like this we want to minimize this quantity x dot square plus x and the into dt this is a cost function to minimize with these boundary condition remember this this boundary condition are fixed actually x of 0 is 2 and x of 1 is 3 both are tightly fixed basically. there is no variation around that particular those particular values basically. We want to do that this minimization we want to do. So, what is the solution here we will follow this L equation approach then first we have to define this L, L is whatever is inside the integral. So, that is L is nothing but x dot square plus x in this particular example. Then E L equation tells that this condition has to be true del x by del L by del x minus d has to be 0. Okay. So, that means, if you plug it back this L definition here then del L by del x is nothing but 1 okay, coming from here. Okay. So, this this is 1 okay. then d by d t of this one. So, what is del L by del x dot this is nothing but 2 x dot. Okay. 
and d by d t of 2 x dot is nothing but 2 x double dot. Okay. So, 1 minus 2 x double dot equal to 0. Okay. That means, x double dot is equal to half and then you can integrate it rather easily. When x double dot is half, then x dot is nothing but uh, something like uh, half t plus okay, easy right. I mean, it is that easy when, when something like this happens, then x, x of x dot of t is nothing but uh, t by 2 okay, and uh, x double dot of t something like I mean, x sorry, x of x of t is an integral of that and things like that, that way. So, this is something like c 1. I mean x dot is nothing but t by 2 plus c 1. So, x of t one more time integration. So, that is t square by kind of 4 t square by 4 plus c 1 t plus c 2. Okay. That is what is written there. Okay. Okay. So, this one I can do is already there anyway actually. Okay. So, you from this equation x double dot is half you get x dot is t by 2 plus c 1 and if you integrate it one more time you will get t square by 4 plus c 1 t plus c 2 that is how we will get actually. So, it has two constants c 1 and c 2 which needs to be evaluated at the boundary using the boundary conditions. Now, what is the boundary condition available x of 0 is 2 and x of 1 is 3. So, you put x of uh, 0 is 2 that will give you if you evaluate that at x of 0 that means t equal to 0 this is 0 this is 0. So, this is nothing but 2. So, 2 equal to c 2 that is what you directly get it here. Okay. And if you evaluate the other one that x of 1 equal to 3, then x of 1 is uh, t, t is nothing but 1. So, it is 1 by 4 plus c 1 plus c 2, 1 by 4 plus c 1 plus 2 now because c 2 is 2 has to be equal to 3 that is condition itself. Okay. So, you put that back and evaluate c 1 and c 1 happens to be uh, something like this 2 minus 3 minus 2 is 1 already minus 1 by 4. So, that happens to be 3 by 4. So, the final solution happens to be this one actually. That is how you solve it. This is a very simple scalar problem with two fixed boundary problem boundary conditions actually. But remember, you this you may not have this kind of luxury all the time actually. And also a small comment: the transversality condition is automatically satisfied because there is no variation around that. These are these are tightly fixed there. So, no variation. These two are zero. So this quantity, what you see here, the delta delta x t f is zero, and delta x t zero is also zero. So, this this condition is automatically satisfied, you do not have to worry about that, we do not get anything ext any extra information from there that is already embedded when we talk about fixed boundary conditions like that. Okay. What happens to the next equation? I mean you can see is an example is a very same problem, very similar looking problem, j is same and x of 0 is 2 which is also same, but now x of 1 is, is free, is not fixed actually. Okay. Then we will see that the solution nature changes actually. Okay. How do you do the how do you see that? Okay, now this part of the equation remains same, L is same and the L equation is same, this equation is same, and hence the generic form is same. Okay. But when you start evaluating the boundary condition, now again the first boundary condition is same. So again C2 is 2, that is fine. But the second boundary condition we cannot evaluate anymore. So we have to go back to that transversality condition and tell okay, del x by del x dot into dxf. Okay, minus del s del l by del x dot uh, into d x 0, I mean whatever the this equation is 0. Now, d x 0 is 0 that part is all right, okay. but first first part we will have to extract actually because that is that is not 0 in general because x f is free. So, it can take any value. So, delta x f is can take any value basically. Okay. So, we will uh, so that part if that happens then this coefficient corresponding coefficient has to be 0 that is that uh, what will give us another value actually. So, this equation has to be true, but this is not 0 in general. So, the coefficient has to be 0. Okay. If coefficient is 0, then del l by del x dot, del l by del x dot is nothing but 2 x dot, right. Okay. So, 2 x dot evaluated at t f equal to 1, remember that is more important actually. This happens only at the boundary. So, t f is 1 here. Okay. So, 2 x dot evaluated at t f equal to 1, that has to be 0. And what is 2 x dot? And remember x dot is that. Okay we just derived that I mean it is x dot is because x dot is that. So, 2 x dot is something like this. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So, this is uh, this we will get some value there actually. So, you just evaluated that uh, I mean evaluate that del l by del x dot equal to 0 del l by del x dot happens to be something like this. Okay. So, 2 of that and then put it equal to 0 sort of thing actually. Okay. Uh, in fact, if 2 x dot happens to be uh, sorry one second, 
2 okay. x dot happens to be 0 ok. Uh, okay. Then x dot is also 0 ok. So, that is what is happening that the small algebra mistake here. So, I let me try to correct it the 2 x dot is 0 then then 2 is not necessary x dot is also 0 basically. So, when you x dot is 0 then x dot is nothing but uh, that what you what is have it here. So, that is what is getting used here actually. Mm -hmm. So, C 1 is nothing but uh, uh, minus 1 because T f is 1 remember that. So, C 1 happens to be minus half. So, what the solution is solution is like this. So, in one case you will end up with a solution something like this and the other case you will end up with a solution something like this so, very different actually. Just because one case the bound the final boundary condition was fixed at a value the other condition tells about it is a free value actually and remember free means it can be far away from this value we do not care actually. Okay. And that is why it gives you a different solution actually that way. Okay. Okay. So, this is what uh, was the fun of our uh, I mean kind of uh, very interesting to see in, in calculus of variation ideas actually. Okay. Now, transversality condition in general you can talk about something like this. So, first we derive this part of the condition, but in general if t is also free also variations can happen in, in initial time as well as final time. So, in in all our derivation here we assume that uh, this uh, t 0 and t f these are fixed actually, ok. But suppose they are also I mean they can also vary that means, uh, you do not know the initial time it uh, you, uh, you allow some flexibility for that and you do not know the arrival time we also allow some flexibility of that that means, uh, the t f is also kind of flexible. Then you can have I mean that pro those problems are also allowed in the in the framework of calculus of variation and in those derivations ok you go through that then you will end up with something like this. Okay, all right. And also remember this: this minimum time solution problem and all that. This happens to be a very critical information actually. Okay, when you talk about XF, I mean, TF is uh, free, and you want a minimum time also thing. That kind of formulation we'll see as you go along later. But you'll see that this transversality condition is very handy actually. Okay. So the, the fixed endpoint thing; these are fixed, so it doesn't give any additional information. If you give this condition, this T0 T F are fixed, what we just derived, then this two quantities, this T0 and T F both are 0. So, this this is gone. So, we will end up with that that we derived. However, if T0 and X0 are fixed, ok, but free final time and free final state, then you have to talk about this now because T0 and X0 are there. I mean, delta T0 and delta X0, the, those are 0, but the delta XF and, uh, and delta T F, those are not 0. So, we end up with some equation like this, ok. Similarly, if these three are fixed for the pre final time, then you will end up with some equation like this. And uh, if all are fixed, then you will end up with something like this actually. So, this is a trans general transversality condition kind of uh, embeds a lot of cases, lot of uh, uh, cases that are of interest to us actually. Okay. All right. And there is a very special case that we discussed in the beginning that initial uh, time and uh, I mean uh, x 0 are fixed. But this T f x f is constrained to lie on a given curve eta t ok then what happens. So, you will invoke this in this one I mean transversality condition, but remember the delta x f is free, but in a constraint way that means it has to set it has to lie on this curve. So, the delta x f can be can be kind of expanded this way delta it d eta by d t into delta f sort of thing. And so, it gives us uh, some delta x f is nothing but that basically. Okay. So, now you put it back and then uh, talk about ok this is the whole thing multiplied by delta T f is 0, but delta T f is non 0 because uh, you are allowing some uh, freedom in the T f. So, this uh, coefficient has to be 0. So, that will give you this this uh, transversality condition uh, when you talk about uh, your final state are constrained to lie on a curve on a known curve eta of T basically. Okay. So, this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 these are the different different kind of uh, special cases and all this thing can be derived from, from the from this general transversality condition actually. All right. So, one more example uh, it talks about uh, minimization of this uh, this functional let us say uh, with this condition x of 0 is 0 and T f x f should lie on this curve this is the case that I am talking here. Okay, so, yield equation is very straightforward del L by del x minus dy dt of del L by del x dot equal to 0, where L is nothing but the integral quantity. So, that is that is what it is in I mean integrand value whatever it is there. So, you just plug in the values d L by d x this is not a function of x. So, the partial derivative with respect to x is 0, 
but partial derivative with respect to x dot is not 0 because this is a function of x dot. So, you, would, uh, you would take the partial derivative with respect to x dot and then put it here okay. and then it turns out that d by d t of, of that we need to talk about. Okay. So, remember this is just the partial derivative of that quantity, but then you talk about derivative of that quantity with respect to time again that has to be equal to 0. And when you do that again this partial uh, chain rule and all that you can bring in and tell okay, this is the square of that which is like that and then I talk about this quantity to the derivative of that quantity minus the same quantity into derivative of the other quantity other function like that actually. this is some some f of x the x dot divided by g of x dot sort of thing. Actually. So, you use that formula properly when you take the derivative of that and ultimately you will end up with the case where the 1 plus x dot square is always a positive quantity. So, we ignore that that you multiply that side it is 0 and you will end up with you simplify this expression you will end up with this some, some equation like this actually okay. and this quantity this this quantity what you see here and this quantity will cancel out basically sort of thing and you will end up with this 2 x dot uh, uh, I mean 2 x double dot equal to 0 that means x double dot is 0. Basically. So, this first term this the second term and this term will cancel out. So, you will have we left out with 2 into 1 is still there. So, 2 x double dot 0. So, that means x double dot is 0 real equation gives you that. So, x double dot is 0 means again c x, x of t is nothing but c 1 t plus c 2 basically. Now, the first boundary condition tells you that x of 0 equal to 0 that means uh, if I put 0 then c 2 is nothing but 0. So, I will end up with x of t is c 1. Now, the transversality other transversality condition will tell us something like this this, this one what is derived here and if you plug in that okay, that gives you some, some condition like that okay. and if you if you work out or work it around then, then uh, this gives us this this constraint, constraint actually. Remember x of t is like that. So, x dot of f is nothing but x dot is nothing but c 1 basically. Okay. So, phi minus 5 c 1 and c 1 uh, t f is also c 1 anyway. So, my minus 5 c 1 is like that. So, c 1 is something like that. So, that means x of t is nothing but just t by 5 actually. And remember it is a free final time problem. So, T f is also unknown, but if you really want to find T f then you put this constant equation T f by 5 x of T f is equal to that uh, the minus 5 T f by plus 15 because that has to lie on that curve. Okay. So, if you constrain that equation and you find that value for T f also basically. Okay. Now, before uh, stopping this lecture if you talk about uh, what about sufficiency condition. Now, we will talk about the second variation of that first variation is all about necessary conditions anyway. So, I use the second order Taylor series so, go through that uh, second order expansion and all you can write it that way. So, obviously, this gives us a condition that uh, you can define this uh, this Hessian matrix sort of ideas and if this matrix happens to be positive definite it is a minimum condition if it happens to be negative definite it is a maximum condition actually and neither of the above happens that, that means further math is required and obviously, we will not talk about that in this course itself. But remember that this matrix is time varying in general okay. and hence in uh, one needs to guarantee that it remains positive definite in negative definite throughout the time uh, unlike static optimization. Static optimization these are values now these are function of time x star itself is a function of time x star dot is a function of time. So, this quantity is a function of time. So, when you talk about this matrix is a positive definite matrix that means, it is positive definite throughout the time interval actually that is what we are, we are mentioning here actually. Okay. So, you one has to guarantee that it remains positive definite or negative definite for, for all the time interval actually okay. and also remember this test what you are talking about second variation and all is valid only for free optimization problem because the entire thing we talked about free optimization actually okay. constraint optimization is not valid and further uh, things are required actually. So, with the, that I think we, we are ready to move forward a uh, uh, little more general concepts of, of vector related things and all I will talk about in the next class. But this particular lecture I, uh, I think uh, we have got sufficient knowledge about some ideas of calculus of variation and associated mathematics around that actually. So, I suggest that you kind of understand these concepts well before we proceed further. All right. So, I would like to stop here. Thank you.